RGB, RAM, AIO, SSD, uh, yeah, it's got, oh, RGB in the front there with some Corsair, some brand new Corsair fans. What's going on, people? It's Timmy Joe making videos about computer parts all up on the internet today on the program. This is obviously just a brand new gaming PC that uh, has all brand new parts in it. Totally relevant and, uh, you know, getting 60 frames a second in a very brand new title, Max Payne. What? AMD build. It's an AMD build. It's a good old AMD build. It's got a whole gigahertz. <laughs> Anyways, uh, you want to know what this is, right? I've, I'm just itching to tell you. So how about I'll put my thing down, flip it, and reverse it. That's about right there. And uh, we'll back it up and uh, we'll build the PC retrospective, extroactively, and then uh, you'll get to know what's actually going on here because I had a lot of fun doing this little project. And um, you know what? I just want to get to playing the games. Maybe we'll even overclock it. Timmy Joe reviews anything. Reviewing computer parts on YouTube. That's Woo! You gotta be pumped on that, right? Well, computer parts! Woo! Oh, yeah. And now we're all reversed. We put it, our thing down, flipped it, and reversed it. I'm Timmy Joe, and this is the reverse sleeper build, which I thought was a concept I totally made up. It turns out Phil's computer lab has done it. Not quite to this extent, uh, but it's been done before, so shucks. But I think I'm doing it uh, pretty interestingly. The whole idea was to use as modern a hardware as possible with as old a hardware as possible, if that makes any sense. Make it look like it was, you know, a pretty decent you know, computer until you really start looking at uh, the internals, which I think we kind of got away with, especially with the RGB uh, RAM. And, you know, keep in mind, this is SD RAM. <laughs> SD RAM. Yep, this is value PC 133, 256 megabytes, and, a, and I think another 128 of RAM. <laughs> so, what are the specs? What's going on here? Well, uh, my first computer build, the build that I did, uh, like literally, like I bought the components and bought a case, put it all together, was with very similar hardware to this. I even think, uh, if, if my memory serves me, this is the exact motherboard I had. Now I procured this one a little bit later and it came with an 800 or a 700 megahertz Duron on it, but uh, I have here a one gigahertz Athlon T-Bird Thunderbird processor. This is one of, if not the first Athlon generation uh, you know, this is, you know, P3 era, it's an exposed die. This year, AGP, of course, it has absolutely nothing on board, unless you want to count a parallel and two COM ports and two USBs. But we do have uh, two more USBs added in a uh, separate card. And then we need, of course, some per some some other cards. I was going to say peripheral. Well, no, we need, like, literally 
cards to put in this. So here is a uh, uh, 10 by 100 uh, PCI, there you go, for networking because that was a thing back then. No onboard networking. And then we have a Sound Blaster Auto G2 right here that uh, we are going to use for sound. And then we've got 128 and a 256 uh, meg, megabyte uh, RAM, and this is SD RAM. So this is not DDR, this is SD 100 RAM. This is a super, super slow, super low capacity stuff. And then uh, how we did the video card, well, 9800. I was trying to think of a way to put, um, you know, some fake cooler on the card or something like that in order to, uh, you know, make it look more modern. But there's just no real way, like uh, the way the heat sink is put on with this is with like two bra brass pegs and there's just no way, like it's not a standard video card for me to do anything with this. So I just left it alone. I've already had to put my own fan on it because the original fan died, but it's a Radeon 9800 Pro with 256 megabytes of video memory. Isn't that awesome? So that goes in the AGP slot there. And then uh, of course we are going to need some storage. So I initially was going to use an SD card in this ID to SD uh, affair, but the whole idea was to use as modern a hardware as possible. So we're going to use this Patriot uh, Burst SSD. Actually already has the operating system and everything on it. We're going to plug it into this IDE to SATA adapter and this will allow us to just use the motherboard's IDE channel an 80 meg or gigabyte uh, hard drive was big back then so this 120 that's gonna house a lot of games you know we're not even gonna touch filling that up and then uh, of course I've got the captain which we secured on there with zip ties I'm sure I'm I haven't figured it out yet because I haven't actually done the reverse build like this is before uh, anyways you understand uh, I wanted to put a real life AIO on this old CPU and uh, see if we can't overclock it which I know we actually can We'll see what we can do. I'm sure it's just the novelty of having a proper, you know, new school AIO on this old school direct die processor. I think that's pretty funny. And then to cap it all off, I went on Amazon and for like 18 bucks, you buy these RAM covers and uh, we put RGB RAM, you know, and it plugs into a fan header to get, you know, the lights to light up. And you, I don't really think you have any control over what's displayed on these, but I guess we'll figure it out. I have tested this all out on the test bench, so I know it works. And we're gonna be playing some uh, games of the era on Windows XP and actually seeing what we can do on Windows XP with a gigahertz processor, uh, as far as like browsing the, re the web and like productivity and stuff like that real quick as well. So let me get to actually building this so that I can then reverse it in my editing software. And then uh, you've already watched all that. So I guess from here on out, we're gonna cut to this thing back together and we'll do some testing, which will be really fun. So get to it, Timmy Joe. Build up that AGP monster. <laughs> What's going on? It's been a couple days. I've had a lot of fun playing around with the reverse sleeper and uh, you know, kind of figuring out its limitations and actually being surprised by what a one gigahertz, one gigahertz single core CPU can really do. Socket A, and there were Athlons that were on like the slot A or like the slot, you know, like the Pentium 2, like big cartridges. You'd like there were Athlons in that, uh, you know, that time frame. This is a little bit later than that, but this socket, socket A actually lasted for quite some time into the um, uh, uh, Athlon XP going all the way up to like almost, you know, three gigahertz or even beyond that. Uh, well, I battled with the Pentium 4 until that kind of stuff changed. So the, the, I can't believe what this thing can do. It's pretty interesting. We're running 3D Mark 2001. This would be like this thing's wheelhouse. The graphics card is, you know, a little bit, you know, it's too late. It doesn't make sense for me to be using these. These are actually bottlenecking the CPU pretty hard, as we're going to see, because this is from 2003, so about three years later than the CPU that's in here. And I actually put in the X800, the Radeon X800, uh, which pretty much doubles the performance of what the 9800 could do-ish. Uh, and um, 
you know, it's it's from 2004, so it's a little bit beyond what this can do and what the CPU can do in here. CPU is a huge bottleneck, and I'm actually pretty limited because I only have 384 megs of RAM in this thing. That's all I have for SD RAM laying around. I have another 64 uh, chip, you know, hoping that I could slot that in there too, but it just doesn't post with it in it. So I've had a lot of fun playing with this, and it's upgraded, you know, aesthetic from borrowed from our time from 2019, and it's just making me, it's tickling me, it's making me laugh. This is one of the funnest builds I've done in a long time, uh, to where, you know, you just, it's, it's something different, you know? It's using the RGB puke of 2019 to you know, bathe up an older, like 20 years old, man, this, this motherboard and CPU, pr pretty much, you know, from the year 2000, and uh, it has limitations, it's the A7V, that's what it is, right, A7, V, A7V, yes, and it's a kind of synonymous motherboard with this socket, with this generation, and, uh, and we might even be able to do some overclocking. The front side bus is unlocked in the BIOS, but my chip must be locked, and there is a pencil trick we can do to connect some leads to unlock it. The whole idea was I wanted to do that, and that's why we have the EIO here. The, it looks like the temperatures never go above like 45 degrees uh, with this under load, even with a little bit of an overclock uh, on the front side bus getting 1050 megahertz I you can apparently get these to like 1.15 gigahertz but uh, it's just it's like so minor but I guess it would translate like that's uh, you know, 15% improvement, that's, if we can see that in games and FPS, that would be certainly helpful, because as we'll see in a second, it's really, really slow. It does pretty decently with, you know, titles of the era, but the computing power just got, you know, started doubling and tripling every year during, you know, the 2000s that uh, the, the hardware in this, the one gigahertz, got left behind pretty quick. Here, we'll jump into some benchmarks, and then uh, when we come back, I am probably going to take this apart and try and uh, overclock it, essentially. But I've got the numbers with the uh, X800 and the Radeon, uh, you know, the uh, 384 megs of RAM and the gigahertz processor here, just, you know, to show you something on the screen. It should be fun. Starting things off with my old friend of mine, Max Payne, and his ability to, well, basically matrix jump while he shoots. And I was expecting to be able to crank up the resolution. This is from about 2001, so the CPU was fairly new, you know, coming out in 2000. But uh, unfortunately, this is the lowest resolution and uh, medium settings. And, uh, you know, it looks better than when I played it back in the day in software mode, but, uh, you know, still stressing it. So, Need for Speed Underground here. I played this around the time on a much worse computer and I was expecting a little more out of it but medium settings medium resolution here and it did very well but then move on to its brother that only came out like a year later and the hardware had already caught up to the point where this uh, you know stuff was uh, unusable uh, on the lowest settings like pretty bad experience in Need for Speed Underground 2 and then uh, we have Grand Theft Auto Vice City and it ran exceptionally well at some decent settings uh, I was actually having a lot of fun playing around with this and it was, it was doing well fairly well optimized game though and then speaking of well optimized games Half-Life came out in 1998 so this would have been very good hardware for the time but uh, you know it's just a well optimized game and runs very very well on low-end hardware and uh, we're able to crank up the resolution and everything like that doing pretty good <laughs> but uh, you believe people are still playing CS 1.6 there's like a pack set up so that you can log on to a couple of servers they're all like in Lithuania but uh, uh, 1.6 was a little bit uh, too much for this PC just keeping track also very too much for this PC uh, Battlefield 2 uh, I couldn't get my hands on Battlefield 1 but this was absolutely unplayable on the lowest settings and then Far Cry I was hoping to play it's from 2004 and uh, now uh, you could just tell from the way the menus were loading on the lowest possible settings it looked like utter garbage and you know struggling for 20 FPS and then this is what happened every time I tried to load the level so something must be missing so uh, 3d mark 2001 would have been you know this is very high in hardware the video cards from 2003 so you think that they would do really well it does okay and when I upgrade the uh, you know the 9800 over to the X800. We got a little bit better settings, but the CPU is definitely holding it back. But speaking of the CPU, we got Cinebench. We have to run Cinebench, right? 9.5 here, and then you know we get a 105 
Not so hot for Cinebench 9.5, but I'm surprised it even ran it. So just to give you some point of comparison, I put my 3900X to the task, and although I'm very certain this program is not optimized, you can see a single core get a 14 180 something there so you know it's like 14 times faster per core cpu and then uh, you know browsing the web was basically impossible with the version of firefox you can still get to run a lot of websites lock up and then i actually tried to uh, do a facebook post from this version of firefox and it literally crashed the computer and shows a low virtual memory error <laughs> so facebook killed the browser on this thing Oh my god, we're almost through Cinebench 9.5 on the gigahertz, well now 1.1 gigahertz, uh, Thunderbird! This is awesome! So I connected the little leads under L1 uh, beside the die on like the substrate or whatever, the, uh, the actual, it's like ceramic, like the CPU, and uh, you run a pencil lead to connect them and sh thereby shorting them out, unlocking the CPU. And I was talking with Retro Hardware, our awesome guy, uh, has 10,000 subscribers now, and uh, I can't believe he's like this Russian dude, or I hope he's maybe, anyways, from around there, and he clearly just has a fetish for old hardware, has everything under the sun. Figured if anyone knew about overclocking the CPU, he would, right? All right, so we did up our Cinebench score by about 10%. We're at 17, 117 over 1.5. That's awesome. We literally overclocked the CPU. Wonder if we can take it any further. Anyways, he said that once I unlocked the CPU, I should get the option to mess with the multiplier in the BIOS, but it didn't work like that. Um, but I'm able to flip some jumpers in here and I didn't know what jumpers to flip. That's why I was asking Retro Hardware. He said, don't worry about those, use the BIOS, but I'm not having any luck finding that in there. So I just started flipping switches and before it would never boot uh, if you had any of the diff switches flipped uh, in the on position. This time it started booting and I was able to get uh, at 10,050 megahertz. Give me a second, I'll see if we can overclock any further. But yeah, we got, here, check it out, check it out. 1,000, or 100, I should say, and 17 on the Cinebench. And uh, it says we never did any more than 55 degrees. So maybe putting the um, AIO back on will help out a bit. I don't know, maybe it wasn't even making very good contact, but I'll get her figured out. All right, so this is where we ended up, unfortunately. So we're at 11.02, uh, yeah, basically f five on the FSB, front side bus. Uh, is about all we can do, and we can get that 50 megahertz by changing the, uh, here, if we turn it around, there we go. That's the jumper configuration I locked in, so all of them on except for one, and that seemed to increase the multiplier by 50 megahertz uh, in order to get this going on. So I've been trying, I just tried at 108, 105. 7, 106, and uh, they all crashed max pain. 105 was working before, so uh, 1100 megahertz is about as far of an overclock as we can uh, muster here. All right, I'm going in at standard definition. So instead of the pretty much lowest possible resolution, I'm going to what would, would have been a standard television definition. Uh, oh, there we go. So I never had a problem with max FPS. Like it, it'll go up to 85, we see, no problem. But it's as soon as I start looking around, yeah, I see we're dipped down to 15. All right, so I'm coming up on a boss battle here. Let's see if the FPS uh, increased enough for me to actually feel a difference. Uh, we're running at standard definition, 720 by 480 here. Oh, and we're on a boss fight, so this is gonna be fun. 35 frames a sec. You know what? It's definitely more responsive, but we're still, yeah, we're still down to like, single digit frame rates well bit fires being thrown and stuff like that so so yeah uh, 100 megahertz isn't going to do it but i mean it was fun wasn't it didn't really help with the gameplay we got a little bit better cinebench r 
or is it even our 9.5 result? Uh, you know, and I guess that's cool. And then the FPS in games didn't really, you know, it's the frame times that are the issue, which is a CPU bottleneck, which uh, at a gigahertz, I understand that some of these games need a little more horsepower than that. I think Max Payne's from a year or two after the CPU launched, and no one was, you know, even pushing, you know, higher than 800 by 600 back then. So pretty fun. So I want to thank Corsair. They're the ones who uh, spotted me this case. It's their 275R Airflow. It's a kind of more budget airflow oriented case. Doesn't come with the RGB fans that you see in there, but uh, they sent me some to pretty up the case, but you could add your own or you could add, um, they have LL120 fans and uh, we got a working show on the RGB. We got a deep cool Captain uh, AIO installed in this thing. And as far as the case goes, super thumbs up. It would work for a proper, you know, actual new build, no problem. Looks super nice. You know, it's got these cool textures on the front and a lot of airflow that'll come through here. You could mount fans at the top. Uh, it's got a basement, but we've got a modern power supply. We've got, uh, you know, some modern features, modern storage solution in this, uh, you know, and an AGP card that's a little bit too fast for the CPU and a CPU that we were able to overclock with that AIO. It's just, it's been a hell of a lot of fun. And uh, I definitely want to do this again. I have a Core 2 Duo motherboard, like a Socket 775 that will do, that actually has an EGP slot. It's like one of those go-between boards. But with the CPU you could put on that, uh, you could definitely uh, take these cards and run them, you know, uh, bottleneck the, the cards themselves rather than the reverse being happening right now. As well as uh, I have like one of the last AGB cards that ever uh, was made, a buddy of mine's lending it to me. It's a, a HD 4650. And there's a HD 4670, uh, and there is a 38 something that's also AGP, or, or 37 something. Anyways, uh, it, it'd be fun to max one of those out, and we'll do like another reverse sleeper build with some more, you know, mid range hardware from a couple of years from this. I'd like to test these games again. This was a lot of fun. It was kind of a time machine for me. So I'm not watching me Joe Instagram and Twitter. I want to thank Retro Hardware for help, trying to help me with the overclock on this. I did end up using the dip switches and uh, we got it overclocked 50 megahertz and then the front side bus 50 megahertz. We got her done. So thanks buddy uh, <laughs> with the dip switches. And then I want to thank Corsair for sending over the case. Well, thank Deep Cool just because I'm using one of their uh, you know, AIOs. Pretty cool, fit perfectly, perfect square. Uh, and you know zip tied it on and it worked out very well and uh, we did some XP and actually realized XP with 384 megs of RAM can actually still do some stuff like that makes no sense but we, you know, we were able to play some video games of the era and it kind of opened up my eyes to some new things I could be doing with some older hardware, you know, making them mo modernizing them uh, and kind of seeing, you know, where they could go. So I think the next should be like uh, a Core 2 Duo and some more AGP cards that would be fun. So I'm out watching Joe Instagram Twitter. Thanks to Corsair. Thanks to Retro Hardware. And thanks to all you guys for watching uh, me put 20 year old hardware inside of an RGB case and uh, put some RGB RAM on a computer that had no business. Am I the first person that's ever made SD RAM RGB? Probably not. But in my mind, I probably am. So n thank you very much for watching. Timmy Joe. We'll see you guys later. Retro PC. Go!